This is John for Global Traveler. Today I'm talking travel with Thomas Swick, author, writer, travel expert. How are you, sir? I'm good, John. How are you? I am good. It's sunny out. I'm always ready to talk travel with you. One of the things that amazes me about you is uh, your story is that around your college age, shortly after, you traveled to a lot of places, France, Washington, D.C., London. How did you have the courage and how did you go about doing that? Because, uh, you know, when I was that age, I couldn't imagine, like, barely leaving the state. How did you go about all that? Uh, it was intimidating, to be honest. Uh, when I went to France, I could not speak the language, but my goal was to learn it. And I enrolled in an institute for foreign students. And I spent about eight months, you know, the school year from, from the fall to the beginning of summer in school. And then, you know, my getting just being able to communicate and I didn't want to come home because I just thought I might forget what I'd learned. And I went and got a job on a farm in um, the northeast of, of France, a beautiful area of Alsace. And that was the perfect way to learn a language, to get the basis, the foundation in a classroom, and then go out and live with the people who didn't speak a word of English. And you know, I spoke French day and night for, for two months that summer. Um, so yeah, at the beginning it was it was a little intimidating, but um, you know, you you work your way into these situations. And then I went to Poland. That's uh, easier to explain because I met a Polish girl on my way back, on my way home from France, and fell in love. And uh, at least going to Poland, I I had somebody there. You know, I, I I knew somebody. My girlfriend was there to show me around, and and uh, that made the the trip over there a little less intimidating. So, did you always want to travel, or did the, did your love of travel really spark up after you started traveling? Uh, I'll tell you, it sparked in uh, my junior year in high school. My parents made me take Latin. And I wasn't I wasn't very happy about that. But one day the teacher came in and said the Latin clubs of New Jersey were sponsoring an Easter trip to Rome, Naples and Sorrento. And I asked my parents if they would send me on this trip and to their eternal credit, they did. And that was the trip that just made me. That was, you know, my, the first real foreign city I ever saw was Naples. And it was so different from Phillipsburg, New Jersey. And I just wanted to experience more of that. It was just another world, another way of life. Um, yeah, I was, I was, I was hooked. And you're living in Florida now, correct? Yeah, I live in Fort Lauderdale. How did that come to be? How did you end up deciding on moving to Florida? Well, I was working as an editorial writer in Providence, Rhode Island. Not very happy with um, my job. And I got a, an offer to be the travel editor of the Sun Sentinel in Fort Lauderdale. And basically, I would have gone anywhere for that job. And I, I took the job and worked here as the newspaper travel editor for 19 years. And um, can't imagine a, a better way to, uh, to earn a living. I mean, I took maybe four trips a year. Uh, every summer I went to, to Europe and, um, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. So at some point in your journey, you became an author. How did you make the jump from writing for the, the Sun Sentinel to, to writing a book? Well, it was in my spare time. Actually, the first, my first book, which is about Poland, Unquiet Days, um, I wrote before I got this job in, in Fort Lauderdale. I wrote it. You know, while I was in Providence and before that, Philadelphia, I wrote it on the in the evenings and weekends. You know, mo a lot of writers work um, all the time. You know, they have a full time job and then they do the writing they really want to do in their spare time. So that's how I wrote the first book. And then the second book is a compilation of stories I wrote for the Sun Sentinel. So that was that was easy to put together. Um, and then the third book was I wrote after I got laid off from the Sun Sentinel. Well, you know, that's the thing. A lot of times when I talk to travel authors, I like to ask, how do they keep their books from becoming um, repetitive, cookie cutters, you know, formulaic? And when I was looking at your summaries of your books, the answer is quite clear. Your books are all different. You've got a collection of essays. You've got your story in Poland. You've got, um, the, you know, the joys of travel. It's it's they're all different. Um was that a plan of yours or did that just come about through the natural process of writing the books? 
I'd say a little of both. I mean, the, the beauty of travel uh, writing is that you're always going to new places. You, you're always seeing, you know, something new. I was a feature writer in my first job in, in Trenton, New Jersey. And I, after that first year, I had to cover the same events again, you know, that came up like the Huntington County Fair, you know. So I'd already done that. And but travel writing doesn't it, there's a there's a lack of repetitiveness that's just built into the genre. And um, what I like about the new book, um, Falling Into Places, is that my first book that has a strong a narrative. It tells a story from beginning to end. My my other books are kind of cobbled together from from stories and essays, but this is a this is a um, a continuous narrative with um, ups and downs, and it's um, I hope I hope people will like it. So this one is a little more personal to you, maybe is that M- much much more personal? I mean, I I ret- in much of the book takes place in Poland again, uh, like my first book. But it's very different. It tells the personal story, which I left out of the first book because I wrote that book in the 80s when, you know, it was right after Lech Wałęsa Solidarity Movement. Poland was, it was, it was a very pivotal time and not just in Polish history, but in world history. And I didn't think my story was that significant. I wanted to focus solely on Poland. This book, I focused also on Poland, but also on on myself and my my story, my love uh, story with my wife, um, and my my development as a writer, which really happened in Poland. That's where I really blossomed, I think, as a as a writer. Then I have to ask you, what did you learn about yourself through writing this book? What did I learn about myself writing this book? Um, I I don't know. That's a good that's a good question. It's not. It is introspective in parts, but, um, you know, I think as a travel writer, my focus is always on what's outside of my particular um, periphery. I'm I'm always focused on the people around me a little more than I am on myself. Um, I had to get away from that in this book. But, um, well, one thing I'll tell you, I think I learned is I'm persistent because it took it took me a while. It took me a, a, quite a while to find the publisher for this book, um, but I thought it was. I just thought it was worthwhile, and I, I really thought it it could find a publisher if I found the right one. And and sure enough, I did. So, I I did show myself to be very determined and kind of stubborn. I wasn't going to give up. Well, we're recording this, I believe, a day before it's being released. Correct? It's, That's right. Yes, November fifteenth. People could find it on your website. I'm sure they could find it at their local bookseller, or Amazon as well. I, I'm right. I'm sure. Um, I don't right. think we're going to get it because um, in, in reading the summaries of it and talking to you, I'm excited about it. And I'm half Polish. So that that brings a whole other avenue for me. With a name like Wrublewski, of course, yeah, I knew you were Polish. Yeah. It has to be, right? So yeah. in all your travels, you got to tell me some places that, uh, you know, under the radar places that you've been that you really found fascinating. Poland, <laughs> Poland okay. definitely. Um, but Poland's kind of um, coming up now. A lot more tourists are going to Poland. My wife and I go back. We've been back the last two years. And Warsaw, every time we go to Warsaw, we're just amazed at what a vibrant European capital it's become. So Poland's up there. Um, I used to think Portugal was, I still think Portugal is a great country, but it's not unsung anymore. It's really, really popular. But I first went there in 89, and there weren't many tourists in Portugal then. I love Turkey, uh, which, you know, is is popular with tourists, but not, not nearly as popular as Greece. Um, and one of my best trips ever was to Vietnam. And I know some Americans are reluctant to go to Vietnam, I've rarely been in a place where I've been more warmly received as I was in Vietnam. The hospitality that was extended to me as an American was really um, incredibly touching. Um, So Vietnam is very high on my list. And where would you like to go that you have not been yet? Well, uh, there's no chance of going there now, but I'm... I'd like uh, some day if things if, if the world situation changes, I would love to go to Iran. I'd like to see Persia, um, the history, the the culture of Persia. I think is really fascinating, and also, I mean, I've been to Russia, but 
only St. Petersburg. So there's a lot of Russia I haven't seen. And again, it's not a place I I would uh, rush off to right now. Um, you know, there there's still a lot of places. There are four states I haven't been to in the U.S., so I have them on my list. So there, there, thankfully, there is there will always be places I want to go. Well, now you've piqued my curiosity. There are four states you haven't been. Which states are those? Well, some are, I think, pretty easy to guess. Alaska is pretty far away sure. from Florida. Um, North Dakota. Nebraska. I've never been to Nebraska. Wow. And this is the one that surprises people, Michigan. Wow. I've, wow. Never, been, yeah. I've never been to Michigan. And again, it's it's. I've always. I, I'd love to see Detroit. Um, uh, the the um, you know along the lake. It's supposedly beautiful in the summer. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, there are a lot of a lot of places still to see here. In, in your in your book, a way to see the world. Yeah, it's a book of essays. One of the essays was about Comiskey Park, the the last days of Comiskey Park. Are oh, you a yeah. sports fan, or was it just a historical thing you wanted? <laughs> I'm a big sports fan. Um, I grew up, um, our family were Phillies fans. So I was a giant, San Francisco Giants fan as a kid because of Willie Mays. He was my, he was my hero. Um, But yeah, I love baseball. um, And I think, uh, and I love the old stadiums. And that just, that was, uh, I love going out to Comiskey that last, it was the last summer of that old park. And I sat next to a lifelong White Sox fan who was just, he was one quote after another. He was just perfect person to sit next to. And he was, he was mocking the Cubs and, and Wrigley Field. He said, you know, they have ivy growing on the wall. I guess they can't get rid of it. You know, <laughs> he was such a diehard South Sider. Uh, and that, you know, it's, it's a part of the culture. And I really love discovering that, that aspect. Well, you just described my dad at Comiskey Park. It might have been him that was sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> so in Florida now, have you uh, changed your allegiances to the Florida team? I or? have. I've become a Marlins fan above all the other teams. Um, I They need as many fans as they can get. You know, the Marlins <laughs> are struggling to get uh, support here. So, yeah, and, you know, they made the playoffs this year. Um, they didn't do very well the, against the Phillies. But, yeah, I, I, I like I like the Mons. I like that they play in Little Havana. They play in the you know the old Cuban neighborhood. It's, it's a cool area. It is an, a cool area, and the only thing that drives me crazy is that it's a retractable roof, and they almost never open it. Yeah, I mean, I have to go even if I go in April, they'll have it closed. And apparently, the players like that. It's hmm. the players who want it to be closed. They want to have the controlled environment. But I went this year to the World Baseball Classic which wow. was played in March. Yeah. You know, Dominican Republic and, and uh, uh, Venezuela and uh, Colombia, they were all there. And it was packed. That stadium, there was wow. not an empty seat. And I'd never seen it like that. And it was it was, it was was great. It was really great. Yeah, I, I went down to Miami. Uh, the Marlins came several years, but I, I enjoyed the whole experience. Great food, a nice park, not a cool area. But yeah, you, got, you just need a few more fans to go out to the games. Yeah, they they need need to have a really good. They had a pretty good season this year, but they have to they have to get more wins and they'll get more fans. I think. Well, from Chicago, I have to say the same thing. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so in all your years of travel, what travel? Well, give me a couple of your travel tips. Oh, uh, my travel tips. I would my my big thing is to get away from the tourist sites. Even if you go, you know, go to a touristy city. You know, Paris. Um, and you can always get away from, you know, there's a kind of tourist route that everybody follows. And if you just pick a neighborhood, I love neighborhoods. You know, for years I used to travel and I often have a contact, you know, a friend of a friend who lived in the place. And I'd, I'd meet them when I arrived and they'd say, well, what do you want to see? And for years I didn't know what to say. And then I, it, it dawned on me, what I wanted to see were neighborhoods. I wanted to see how people lived. Um, so, you know, pick a neighborhood and maybe, you know, even stay in that neighborhood, which you can do now, you know, um, with Airbnb, those, sure. those, those are getting a little, uh, controversial because they're, um, affecting the dynamics of, of cities, but just explore places that where the locals are and, and try to strike up conversations with the locals, you know, try to get to know who they are, what they think. 
how they feel about you and and uh, at the United States. It's just it makes it for a richer and more fulfilling experience that way. Excellent advice. Before I let you go, sir, tell me a little bit more about your latest book and where people can find out more information about you. Um, the book is, uh, it comprises three stories. It's, there's a coming of age story, you know, about my youthful travels and my development as a writer. There's a geopolitical story, because as I said, I was in Poland in the late 70s, the early 80s, with the election of the first Polish Pope, the birth of solidarity with Lech Wałęsa. Uh, so that, th there's a geopolitical story, and then there's the love story. I went to Poland, as I said, because I fell in love with a Polish woman. So those three stories are kind of all interconnected in the book. So you can read it for you can find you can read it for the the love story, but at the same time, learn something about the Cold War. Um, and you can find out more about me on my website. Um, it's my name, Thomas Swick uh, dot com. And there I have um, information about my books, my um, my articles, my freelancing, um, and I even post cartoons. I, during COVID, I started doing weekly cartoons, and so I, I put them up on my website, too. So that's where people can find out about me. Well, thank you for reminding me that I had a little note to ask you about that. I enjoy your really, I really enjoy your cartoons. I, I think they're awesome. A, thank a you. Of, obviously, your writing, so... Thank you. I have one tomorrow that's um, geared to my uh, publication day. I've been saving. I usually post them on Monday, but this this week I'm saving it for tomorrow. Well, you know, I'll be checking out. I always, I've been checking out your site for updates on your book and everything else. So I encourage everybody to check out thomaswick.com <laughs> um, and, and, you know, check out all the books because really, um, again, in reading the summaries of the law, they, they all have something that I thought was really interesting and um obviously all based on travel, but all very interesting from different perspectives. So I, I encourage everyone to check that out. And again, uh, the interview is a little bit after the book was released, but check out the book, Amazon or thomaswick.com. Sir, Thanks, thank, John. You, thank you for your time. Thank you for talking travel. Thanks. I enjoyed it. Thank you, sir.